the 1960 Bellboy 404 Express Cruiser sitting on the 1960 Holesclaw tandem trailer. The boat has been completely restored, repainted with Interlux Perfection two-part epoxy paint and is in stunning condition. The rear of the boat features two motors, the get home motor, the auxiliary motor, which is the 1962 totally restored Mercury 110, 9.8 horsepower, two cylinder outboard. And the main power comes from the Mercury 1350 inline six, two cycle, 135 horsepower engine from 1970 in perfectly restored and perfectly mechanically functioning condition. The Bellboy fits in a normal size garage with a normal height garage door header by about an inch and a half in both dimensions. Looking at the bow of the boat here, you see the million candle power spotlight that shines very brightly at night. The bow rail that was added later in the boat's life. The antique winged navigation light with handle pull. And as we come around the side of the boat here, we see uh, the hatch and the radio antenna, marine radio antenna in its collapsed position the glass sliding side cabin windows, the handrails on top, another view of the hatch, and the horn on the other side of the boat. Coming back now, you see there is an air intake that floods the under the splash well bilge area with fresh air. There are two 20 gallon galvanized steel tanks on either side of the boat. The blower is usually for inboard engines under a cowl, but I thought with the batteries down there and the fuel line, it would be better to keep that well ventilated. Here, another view of the 1960 Holesclaw tandem trailer with fresh new tires, perfectly running electrical connections with the uh, rear lights. Coming forward, you'll see the new winch stand, new winch, and new winch roller, bow roller. Now, we are doing a little demonstrating of the Mercury engine and how it easily gets the boat out of the hole and into a plane with maybe one-third throttle. As we power up here, my companion is telling me there's traffic in the way, so we abort. The kicker motor, the smaller motor, is a Merck 110 9.8 horsepower engine that has been rebuilt, repainted, new decals, new front emblem, sitting on a retracting engine mount that pulls it out of the water when we're not using it and dips it into the water for use. This boat has been carefully and meticulously restored from its 1960s version which was a little more Spartan than this to what you see today. These are pedestal benches that extend back with uh, tons of storage. Pedestal seats which raise and lower for the occupier's uh, pleasure, comfort. The splash well with the auxiliary tank for the auxiliary motor, the Mercury 110. The original boat was powered by an 80 horsepower Merc 800, but 
as we went through the life of the boat and the water skiers gained weight as they aged, my father bought this 135 horsepower inline six in 1970, which gives the boat a tremendous amount of power pulling out skiers. The sides of the boat are a mahogany stained and mahogany trimmed wood. This was all painted white in the original. These have cup holders left and right and stereo speakers for hi-fi sound while out in the cockpit area. The helm has a Garmin 540S colored GPS with depth finder and water temperature. Left and right fuel tanks, tachometer, speedometer. Over here, another depth finder. Uh, the spotlight area and switches for the nav light, horn, bow, uh, front and rear running lights, blower, and the bilge pump. Has an outside navigation radio, uh, marine navigation radio. There's a handheld radio in the cubby. Drink holders. Here. Cabin door has a brass porthole. And there is another one of these foot rests that mounts there when the door is closed and that is stowed in storage. The windshield of course comes off in order for the boat to fit in the garage and there it is stored over a rafter right there along with a four step ladder, tubes, antique water skis, double water skis and then a crazy eight double person tube which is had a tremendous the benches amount with of the use. cushions removed show a very nice stained mahogany seating area which also converts underneath to not converts but reveals storage there for towels and ski vests on this side and on this side picnic supplies coolers and the like while this is open there's the fuel selector, which switches between left and right tank or a center shutoff position, and also a battery switch, which you can select both batteries or the left or right battery to be in use. And that means that if you camp and you use what's called the house battery, you have a fresh unused battery in the morning for starting the engine. So there's your left battery, or I'm sorry, the starboard battery and the port battery. There's the blower, there's the bilge pump down there in the bilge area. Here's the fuel line with a fuel filter that is a maintenance item that is changed every season. Very accessible. The floor has been recently, as in last summer, replaced and Underneath the floor was a pourable, expandable foam, so the boat is now impossible to sink. A safety issue, and, the, and also the, um, the foam acts as a dampener for sound, so the engine sounds are much quieter. That's just a little gunk on there. Here is some footage of the interior of the bellboy, the cabin, wraparound uh, cabin windows. There is the hatch which flips up and allows access to the bow as I've already said. Uh, the sliding glass windows are in excellent condition. Here we have a 12 volt uh, receptacle and this is the switch to turn on the cabin heat, which is nice if you're out here in the fall weather. This dinette table 
which is in its original excellent condition. It has 1950s Formica matching Formica on the uh, sink table. This collapses down so that it lays flat and this cushion that's stored here fits at creating a double bed area for camping sleeping. Inside I installed a, another radio which is um, a marine DCS which means that you can make personal calls from boat to boat without having everyone else hear you. Uh, it's a good thing. It's connected to the GPS so that if there is a distress call made to the Coast Guard it will be providing my exact GPS coordinates so that helps the Coast Guard locate uh, the distress boat very very quickly. This is just a little container for the boat's uh, registration and so forth. A few more cutty areas. We have a uh, four speaker stereo with two speakers here. Cabin dome light with uh, mahogany ceiling and speakers on the outside. Cup holders. Table is removable where you can uh, access the um, batteries and the bilge pump and the blower and all the electronics right Radio. behind that uh, hatch door. We have working water, has a mahogany stained roof liner comes in two halves screwed on to the uh, the frame of the boat up there the hatch lifts like this and latches like that. in 1960 the boat was sold with this option included which is the marine head it is a manual head that in 1960 there was no legislation to prohibit um, flushing raw sewage out into the water uh, and I have not changed this uh, the current requirements are for a holding tank for that but I don't really use the toilet and so it was not a high priority in the restoration to upgrade that but it is in its original restored in perfect condition as is. The deck carpets were custom made. They are indoor outdoor carpeting and they have been bound on the edges so that they will not fray and uh, they provide a lot of um, aesthetic uh, beauty I think to the whole interior of the boat inside and outside and they can be easily removed uh, if they need to dry being hung over something to dry in the case of the cockpit flooring you can see where the table is attached that would have to be unscrewed to remove the carpet not a big deal but that is one extra step with the um, if you wanted to remove the carpet underneath is a uh, marine gray painted brand new floor so there is the overview of this rare and beautifully restored family heirloom that has been used with great pleasure for 54 years